So we just saw Solo, uh, a Star Wars story, or a soy 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 a soy soy soy. Um, so would you, we, like, would you like some soy sauce with that? Since <laughs> everyone in the entire world is going to be giving their reaction, yeah. We decided we're going to do the same, so... Um, I just almost died. <laughs> and and he started singing Star Wars music, and uh, that was awful. And yeah. I, t- I did not want to die to that music. Yeah. Um, so uh, no, no lessons. Speaking of dying, Star Wars, what did you think? <laughs> <laughs> On Solo. Oh, man. So this is a spoiler-filled review. Yeah, so spoilers from here on out. We don't do that yeah. spoiler-free nonsense. You know yeah. what? The movie's out. You know what? If you haven't seen it, you don't care. You clicked on this. <laughs> <laughs> you feel free to click off at any moment, but the spoilers will continue to come. Yeah. So however long it takes you to figure it out, right. it's kind of on you now. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we're going to preface by saying that Cinemark Hollywood Studios is terrible at <laughs> speedy service and we missed the first 60 seconds of this film and then waited around through Deadpool 2 yeah uh, to see the what ended up being a minute of what was a Crawl question mark. It it was their opening crawl. I had okay, so I heard many spoilers about this for evermore, and and I heard about this today about this non crawl crawl, and it wasn't even as I could have imagined because the person described it as a narrative text, so I thought it was just going to be like just one line at the bottom of the screen, like. Space Station Zebra or something, right? Like some quick, like it is a world full of empireness. You know, know, at least it was literally in the same font as a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. Yes, we saw that, and then we saw literally literally the worst Star Wars crawl ever. (laughs) But all the words that came across the screen at that point (coughs) was in the same font, as if like. Yeah, that, so it was continuing so, in the same font as that. So, so I mean, as we snuck into this movie for the second time, just to see the beginning, because I said we're getting the hell out of here after that. Um, ooh, yes, there was a thought, a, a black screen and just a text, and it was a paragraph, and it was I was dying. I had to cover my mouth because <laughs> it was an entire paragraph, and I was like, do another one. Please tell me that wasn't yeah. enough. And then another one showed up. And then... <laughs> and I was like, I was like, please do a third one. Just show that this literally should have been a crawl. And then they did a third one. And I could I didn't read a single word in any of the crawls. Because it was all gibberish. And I was laughing my butt off. I mean, it, 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 it was silly. And, and then it immediately kind of goes in like... This, like, little world where, like, you know, all these, like, kids are, like, talking about, like, they, they like, find that stuff right there, and they're all, like, oh, this is worth, like, a portions, like, they're already talking about portions again. So, like, it cuts from the, well, before that, we get the, uh, he drives the, the speeder around, we get the speeder toy yeah. commercial, 
where we get to see every good angle of this speeder, which looks identical, identical in every way to that toy, which looks like garbage. It looks like a book floating around. So he's driving a book. It looks like a box car. Like if the yeah. speeder was a box car, if it was like it, an 80s Mustang. It almost just looks like, like a normal car because you know he's probably just around. driving a normal car with green wheels so we don't see no wheels later or something ridiculous. Yeah. Right. Being pulled by some sort of trolley or something. Something, and we don't see the wheels. But it looks way more like a car than that land speeder did in episode four. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like a straight up car. If a car had sex with a book because that car's name was Lando Calrissian, <laughs> then you would get this speeder. But that was clearly a better model. Like it was clearly like the the next car. It was like it was like the the twenty ten like or like whatever you know. It's like the next year. Like, and then yeah, we then we went to an orphanage where yeah. I don't know I've heard this movie described by reviewers that sounded way more in detail than the movie actually was. I, I was like I heard it's like go to Super Oliver Twist World, and we went there, and we were there for like. A second? A second. A lot of this movie is like whatever a second. So it's like the description and the reviews are longer than the time yeah. we spend in the moments. And I just, it was even more built up in my head that like we would like, you know, spend any time in this facility, but we're like immediately gone. I completely agree. Uh, I think everything I've heard is like someone's like complaining about this. And it was like, that was like a second. Like, and I feel like it really just like kind of continued. And I really felt like. This movie was more in the world of Star Wars compared to, like, The Last Jedi. Yes, this was actually, like, the world of Star Wars, unlike The Last Jedi, which was the world of the United States of America. Uh, There were some things that leaked over with this L3 GTB character that was in the movie, but for the most part, even that character was just like, it was an SJW in... The world of Star Wars. It was the world of Star Wars. Uh, I think that it was better. It was worse than the prequels, but better than The Last Jedi. <clears throat> and we were talking earlier, and I think we both agreed. It's like either we, uh, either equals Rogue One, or Rogue One might be a little bit better. And I don't really like Rogue One that much. Yeah, but I mean, I, I think that they both, they, they feel like they fit in with Star Wars. I heard a lot of people talking about Han Solo, his acting, and I personally, I, I felt like it was fairly genuine, and I felt it was lighthearted, and I just kind of, it wasn't as terrible as I heard it was. I heard it was like, oh, he's so bad, and like, he wasn't terrible, some of it played off, and it really is just like, and then like when, whenever like they end, like it's first like he join he he loses her right there whenever those um thing whenever those creatures are like going after yeah. him. Yeah, so and they like, steal some stuff. <clears throat> have they have we ever heard of that stuff before in the Star Wars world? This coaxium. It's like unobtainium. I just didn't know if we ever heard of it before in oh. Star Wars. It's some thing. Some liquid vials that can be used as fuel and explosives, and it's rich. It, you know, people pay a lot of money for it, so it, it's everybody wants it. It's unobtainium. I haven't heard of it, but it sounds like in a world of like underground, like where he's like coming from. It sounds like it's like almost like nitrous, or like it's something that like that is almost like <laughs> potential like light speed or like something to that effect. So they but, steal that. But what's crazy is those those creature those uh, that species right there, that those people like uh, they, they had them in the Force Awakens, and they had like a tank on their back where they're <coughs> constantly breathing their or their actual atmosphere from their home planet because they're sort of like a a water type creature that needs to like breathe out of its like weird like gills and they showed like a few of those in the beginning of this movie whenever they were pursuing him in like the airport type scene where it looks like they're trying to get through like airport customs over here and then they get caught and 
you know, but she, with, she she gets. I that, can't believe she put that in. It's like why didn't that that lady should have just screwed him over? And then I like, don't get why she didn't screw him over either at, at first yeah. because she's the Empire. Like that doesn't really sell that the Empire is evil by know, her being I know nice. Because she was almost like no, but it was almost like her greed. She was like. She's like, yeah, I'll, I'll take that. But then, like, she hits the alarm. It's like, well, then you're yeah, going to have to report this. Like, you didn't get away with anything. Like, are you really going to, like, put it in your pocket and be like, oh, no, I just reported them. Like, that, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, or did she really, co- you know, confiscate it like that? <laughs> but. So, they, I'll, I'll say that I, the creatures were not bad at all. Uh, there was one that got a lot of making fun of, apparently, was that giant. Yeah, the giant uh, Alice in Wonderland yeah. caterpillar I, lady. I didn't have a problem with it really. I didn't think that the, I I guess I could see what people. I heard that the critics were laughing at it when it first when it was premiering, and that maybe like the way its body was moving when it was like rising. I could see maybe they were laughing at that, but then when it was talking, it was fine. My problem was when it showed a clip. I was like, so it was sitting there talking, and I couldn't see its face. I couldn't see its features. I couldn't see its mouth moving. And I was like, cut to like a, a diagonal, like side angle so I can see it. And I kept being like, cut to it already so I can see it. And then finally they cut to it. And I was like, oh, good. That one, now I know what it looks like. Thank you. And then, but how, and then we cut back to the other angle. And I could never see its face and never see it talking except for those close ups. And I was like, why are we looking at the front of this thing? I want to see its face. Well, we already saw it as a giant worm creature. I don't know. It seemed. Like, it could have just not had a mouth moving and I wouldn't have known the difference. Like, they could have done that because I heard people complaining saying they thought it might have looked cheap. They were saying that kind of about everybody, but I didn't think any of the other creatures looked bad at all. They were cool the, Star Wars creatures. The, the, they all were even old scissor punch McGee. <laughs> I'll say this, the, the most unbelievable part about that whole movie that, doesn't, that I can't believe belongs in the Star Wars universe that fucking vest he's wearing. That's what it's wearing. <laughs> that vest he's wearing at the beginning of the movie oh, yeah, oh, is so distracting. I didn't hear a word anyone was saying while he was wearing it. I was just like, what is that? And then it almost transcends vest. Like, I almost couldn't even, like, pinpoint that it was a vest. I'm like, what is he wearing? And I'm like, duh, he's on Sully wears vests. Of course. Of course. At least we didn't get, like, someone didn't throw him a vest in this movie. <laughs> Like, here, kid, what's your name? Like, Han, that's a stupid like, name. Yeah, that's kind of what I was expecting when we low. that's kind of what I was expecting when we snuck back into the beginning. Is I thought it was gonna say I thought it was gonna be like he knocked someone out and like put on their clothes as a disguise and he like got that vest. And I thought it was gonna be like, and that's how he got the vest. Yeah. Another question answered. Yeah. Boo! Huh. <laughs> That's how we got it. That's how we got it. Right? So, so they're in the airport. He gets on one side of the door. She doesn't. The door comes down. She gets... And then, I, from what I had heard about... I, I had heard... I mean, I, I knew a lot of this movie. Not everything, but then I did hear... Listen, I mean, until today when I did listen to a pretty detailed uh, spoiler review. Uh, but then I, I knew immediately... I mean, I could have seen that coming a mile away. As soon as that door closed and she was getting hauled away and that... Here's, here's how I knew everything that was going to happen in the movie, even if I hadn't listened to any spoiler review. Every single thing in the trailer is either the train scene or the end of the movie. So every scene, we know nothing's going to happen to anyone because all the scenes that we saw to get us in the theater haven't happened yet. So we know Woody Harrelson doesn't die right here. We know this person doesn't die right here. We know this doesn't happen because we know we haven't seen that scene from the movie yet. And and all the tension, there's a lot, or not all of it, but a lot of the tension of, is this person going to die? Oh, is this going to happen? Oh, is that going to happen? Is like towards the beginning of the film. It's like, we haven't seen the footage. We literally know they're not going to die. <laughs> Unless they just like CGI'd them like Hulk in the background, like... Oh, see, no, here he is. Like, see, you know, they're, they they're continuously like faking, faking it out. They continuously tried to keep killing Han and Chewie. It's like, we know they are not going to die. Yeah. Quit trying to kill them. And I heard someone saying that in another review. But but you know, I did really like the scene where um they 
like literally as soon as they get separated right there at the beginning, um, how it was like, join the Empire, you know, blah, blah, blah. I was like, done, done. Oh, but that's the thing is I knew that she was going to join the Empire and be evil that as soon as they dragged her away. I was like, oh, the next time he sees her, she'll be evil. Yeah, but but either way, I liked that they showed like him on the battle. Like the next second was like warfare, like him. On I like the that, field. and I liked everyone's like outfit. Like they looked sort of Captain Phasma like. I liked it, but then like, we left it and we didn't go back. And I was like, that was like our let's. I don't know. That should have been. There should have been more scenes there, or even a montage or something more in that timeline of after he's already enlisted and seen battle. That was cool. It's like but that it he's said seen three battle. years later, though. It said three years later and jumped that. No, but, no, but, but like then, but then we battle. skip again or he's leaving or whatever. But at that point, I wanted to see more of like I needed to see more of the stuff that's going to make him make the choices he's going to make later in the movie. Like they I made just it seem maybe it was like okay, this is like he joined the Empire three years later and it closed like maybe we could I feel like he's seen like three maybe we could have seen him getting sick of sick of their their BS like maybe he could they could be getting talking he's like I'm like he's thinking about doing something about it like I don't know some sort of be like Finn yeah, like, I don't get fed up. Yeah, I mean, I guess, like, I don't know, some sort of it. It's very quick. It's like we were saying, like, every single thing is like we, st- in the beginning, it's like we stay there for a second and we're gone. And it's like, well, why? You should do more of that. That's the story. Like, that's how you tell a story. And you're just like, we, we got it. Move on. Like, you just, you just had so much to cram in this that you couldn't spend too much time on it. Because it really feels like every single moment, no matter what moment it is, is barely touched on in the whole movie. It really feels like it's fast-paced, like... It's almost kind of like... It felt kind of like that in Deadpool, but Deadpool did a way better job of it. Deadpool 2 felt like it was like three episodes of Deadpool. Yeah. And I liked the way it did it. Where this was like... Though I did feel that about Deadpool 2, I wanted them to stay in scenes longer. Some of them I did want to be like, why did we leave that so soon? Like, let's stay in this scene. Uh, but that 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 was completely like good. Like this is, this is a different ball game. I mean, um, yeah. Uh, so then we just we just he's just he's seen training, and instead of seeing anything, like we could have seen him like handle his own. We could have seen him shoot some people. We could have seen him like do some Krav Maga, some space Krav Maga, yeah. some spas. B- 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 <laughs> It flips people over and show that if he gets in a pinch that he could do something because I kept feeling the whole rest of the movie. It's like he keeps getting in sword fights with people. It's like you, you use a gun. This is the worst. The last thing you want to be doing is getting in sword fights with people because they're all wearing armor that's apparently shield, yeah. shielding your gun blast because guns are flying out of people's hands yeah. left and right. Let's shoot him first. And then, so then what? Uh, oh well, well, before we leave the scene, we see we meet Woody Harrelson. Yes, he's spinning yeah. guns right. And he's see, out in the and open. That's why he's like, <laughs> and he literally says, "Teach me that." It, he's all flipping what? that shit around, the, doing this like is, a fucking backflip and fucking you know. So everyone kind of has around. everyone has yeah. weird mutant powers, weird subliminal powers in the movie, and it's uh, Han Solo is a Mary Sue for real because that's what I'm saying. Like they don't show him like. Do in the training. It's just like, it's been three years he's been training, and now we're gone. There. Okay. You can't say we didn't show him train. It's like, no. You need to show him, like, learn the skills that it's going to keep him alive the rest of the movie. So I feel like he's totally Mary Sue. He's a Mary Solo. Uh, Mary Sue. Well, <laughs> Mary Solo was. Um, he, he was doing it. Um, at, at this point, I'm buying it. At this point, I'm buying it. At this point, I'm like, wow, I heard this was really bad. And it's like, well, this yeah, all I will like say Star Wars universe. The humor is very well handled. It is not like The Last Jedi, and I didn't like the humor in Thor 3, so it is not like Thor 3. I think they have very similar humor, where it's just like two slapstick, two over the top. The humor in this is handleable. I don't necessarily laugh at it, but I don't cringe at it either. It was not horrible. It was, it was like... I really didn't. I really wasn't laughing at it, but I really wasn't cringing. It was it was tolerable, and I wasn't really even thinking about it now that I now that I'm looking back at the movie, like how I do with some of the moments and some of the other movies, some of the Marvel movies sometimes, um, and other things like that. Just depending. That Thor three and that <laughs> and that last Jedi man. It's rough. Rough. I hope you like comedy. 
I hope you came to live. I mean, <laughs> I mean, Chris Hemsworth is fucking me Chris Hemsworth is hilarious, but it's like you have it's one. Like, have you met my friend Rabbit and Tree? You have one character. You have one comedic. <laughs> you have one comedic character. No, he was fine in Avengers. He's hilarious. Yeah, he's because that's awesome all movie. those jokes worked in Avengers. Avengers. But, but in Thor three, everyone's a comedian. It's like no, either one person and maybe even one side character. Could be the comedian, like, but I not. I should have been Thor and Loki being even like, buddy. There's no straight like, man. Even in brothers. even in Guardians, there's a straight man. You have to have a straight man to be like thinking that it's weird. Otherwise, it's not funny. And yeah. like everyone's funny in Thor three. Every single character. And Star Lord, all like, no, you will not take that <laughs> escape pod. And he's like, he's doing it. He's doing it again. He's like, are you? Are you making the voices? Are you doing it again? Um, so let's talk about oh, before. So okay, well, let's, let's finish our talking about Woody Harrelson, and then I want to talk about how how Han Solo got his name. So he, so Woody Harrelson's power is being able to just stand in the middle of unguarded areas and not get shot. That's his superpower. Because at least three times in the film, he just stands there and shooting. And while people are dying left and right, hiding behind things, he is staying, completely standing. But, but what's funny, too, is like he literally loves, like, they're, like, hiding behind something for a second as they regroup. And he's like, who's the commanding officer? Who's the leading commanding officer? Like, they just said, like, the major and this guy just got shot. So I did he like that. Is the captain, he is actually the man. I did get. I did now. get what they said about he's wearing the uniform, but I guess it didn't click for me at first. I thought he was looking down and seeing that his captain. I don't know because Star Wars uh, badges don't look normal, so I thought maybe he looked down at something that I didn't know was a badge. But then later it was uh-huh. revealed that he was faking it, and I did like yeah. that. That was actually smart. He was like, uh, he I heard something. He picked up a dead. Yeah. I heard some people complaining that it was dumb, but I actually thought, oh, maybe I'm dumb. I but, <laughs> maybe, but I thought it was a cool reveal that it was like either you heal really fast or you stole it off a of dead man. And so I thought that was cool. I didn't see that coming, even though I had heard about it. I thought it was slick. I mean, honestly, I think that it shows that he was really a con man who was literally took the took the armor off of a dead soldier and posed as a captain. So what do you think? Did they think they came to steal that stuff and they were just like, we'll sneak in with the war? And they just like yeah. snuck in and just like grabbed some corpses and took their uniforms? Yeah. That's pretty slick. That's literally what happened. That's why it's like that That was so insane that there was actually like that much thought into that. Like, I don't know. Like, I, I expected less. And So they didn't it, tell us who they were at war really with. Wasn't... Did they? Who were they at war with? Or they did a war with the rebels, or like what were they? We yeah. didn't see what they were at war with, did we? Yeah, no. We just saw they're like they're shooting and they're getting shot at an explosion. Well, no, because remember, like they were like rebel. Like I mean, like did they the, like, the, burn a dog or something? Like rebel, rebel. Hey, I, oh, I remember there was a, a very sour pussed faced girl that said, "We're rebels." We rebel over there in the corner. Oh. I remember oh. now, and that's how I knew that they were rebels. Oh. <laughs> and you know, I love, I, I really like Rogue One, and I think it gets better with viewings. But man, you've that seen that Jen, more than once. That Jen Urso, man, oh. she, she, she really rubs me the wrong way. It's I like K two S O, but I guess it's just like I mean, you just don't necessarily like everyone in the universe, and like she really is just one of them. People say, like, man, I don't really like you, but you know, that, 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 that movie is actually really good. Oh, wait, this started when you like, say, oh, you know, yeah, we're back. You like this like movie. It's like Saving Private Ryan with Star Wars, and it's like gritty war film, just like blasting people. I just people threw up in my mouth. flying around. <laughs> they got, you know, all these. They, they got a couple of new cool troops in that movie. So they're on a, a, a mud planet? A, ma- a planet Scarif. made entirely of mud. Scarif, but they got them cool Scarif Wait, have, wait we've seen that before, right? I heard that before. What? Scarif? Scarif? What's that from? Rogue One. We're talking about it. That's in this movie? No, are we, I'm talking about oh. Solo. This mud planet, oh. man. <laughs> I was still on We haven't seen one. this mud planet. So it's a, a planet completely <laughs> of mud. or It never said mud. Oh, no, he goes, I'm taking mud. I was saying maybe it could be a soy planet. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there was a lot of soy in the movie. Maybe it, it is a soy planet a covered soy in planet. mud. Yeah. Uh, so then, 
I was just talking about how, how uh, oh, do you have anything more to say about Woody Harrelson's superpower of standing in the middle of nowhere and just flipping, no, flip, mean, taking time to shoot people by flipping guns around? He's and, like, just he's just like looking at him like, I want to be this. He's guy. in the wild west. Yeah, I want he, to he, be he, inside. He totally him. does, and then he never like flips the gun around or anything once in the film. I know, and like you, because we only know he's only got one solo gun. He never uses two. And, so and I just found out today that but he got my favorite solo so I got, gun. So my favorite gun on Battlefront One because I had only I didn't buy that second abomination, but I did get the first one for twenty bucks. And uh, my favorite gun is the X8 Night Sniper, and I just found out today that that's Lando's gun, and that's freaking awesome. It might have been in this movie, but that's freaking awesome because that's my favorite gun. I didn't know that actually like belonged to a main character or anything. That's pretty cool. Yeah, but... That's my favorite gun on that game. Personally, it's a cheater gun. Personally. It gives you, like, night vision. Pop, pop. It's pretty sweet. I, I heard a lot about Lando still in the show. and He was barely in it. He barely did anything. And he should have been in the Lando outfit instead of Woody Harrelson. That was such BS. It didn't make any yeah. sense because Woody Harrelson had done so much the whole yeah, film. Everyone's they, saying they, that Woody Harrelson did so little outfits. and he did so much. Yeah, and like Lando was barely in the. He, it was even role. Lando's outfit. He went and got like I, I'm assuming that's what they're it, trying to show us is he went in Lando's magical closet and got his Lando's you know like he's got a whole bunch of stuff and he's got that outfit and like he gave it to Woody Harrelson to wear to sneak in. Are you talking about the skiff guard? Yeah. like from Jabba's palace. Yeah, in Return of the Jedi. Yeah, I mean it, it's clearly like this should be Lando and it was Woody Harrelson and like. I heard he had a very little part, and I, I mean, he was in the whole movie. Like, what do you mean he had a little part? <laughs> he was in the entire movie. I've heard every, si- I've heard every single thing in every single direction about it. I've heard he like he dies at the beginning. I heard he uh, does. I heard he's in it so little you can't even remember his name. I heard he doesn't betray him. I heard he does betray him. I heard every single thing from different reviews. It's like, what are y'all all saying in your reviews? What's happening? But you know what's really happening is what's happening right here is we know what actually We all happened. knew, we both knew, what whenever the Super Bowl, like three months ago, we all both knew the ending of this movie. We both said to each other, we might have each said the same thing and then we both agreed. You were like, Woody Harrelson betrays him at the end of the movie. And then I was like, that chick's going to betray him at the end of the movie. Uh-huh. And they both, they both and, did. And then I also knew that... <laughs> they the, both did. I also did. knew that the main, like, the empty nest or envy's nest or whatever, <laughs> I also knew that that would be a girl underneath that. You could just I don't know why they, in the frame. It's weird that... Like, it's so funny. They... They shouldn't have released the toy because the toy gave it away. Well, I think the, the toys are to scale. As soon as the toys the are to scale, and the toy is the same size as one of, as here, and it's like it's clearly a girl, yeah. or it's going to be a little boy, or it's an alien that's that size. But uh, she should have kept the helmet on because I everything after uh, after Emphis Nest takes the helmet off is complete garbage, and I hate Emphis Nest after she takes her helmet off, kind of like Kylo Ren. Uh, she's she is terrible, and her she character does a complete one eighty after she takes her helmet off, and I hate everything her character becomes because then we don't have a villain in the movie. Wow. After she removes her helmet, we no longer have a villain in the movie because the villain in the movie is super lame and barely in it. Why Ginger's not your type? <laughs> <laughs> Look, I mean, I bet Ron Howard was so pissed that everyone found out that it's. They're hiding that it's a girl because the whole movie is we're hiding that it's a girl. It's got a he's got a he's got a uh, what what is the Leia's but see, what is Leia's but it's, it's outfit more called? Like, it reminds she, me. He's got the voice changer. Oh yeah, the um, dang it, what what is that one like the bounty hunter that she dresses yeah. up as? It, it changes yeah, her voice. It's basically the same thing. It's like a Leia inside of an outfit, right? It changes her voice. She sounds yeah, like they, a, they did have. They they were in outfits like that. A lot of this movie ripped off. Uh, I guess way better than the last uh, Jedi because the last Jedi didn't do anything well. There's a lot of this movie ripped off Return of the Jedi in a good way. Yeah. Not necessarily a good or a bad way, but just like in a way. I think. A, I mean, if it was going in a in one way or the other, I think it was going more in a positive way. I don't think so that many moments. I really don't think it was terrible. So many outfits, so much style. It really was like what if. 
this with think the... Return of the Jedi? Maybe. Or like a side story? It should have been. That would have been a cool. Per- personally, I thought that, if it had been said that, at the same time that Han and Chewie together, I thought actually I heard I heard the whole thing. It sounded stupid on paper, and then like their whole like even like getting the, like you think it's going to be a rancor, and then it's oh yeah, so this is how they meet. I was like, it to me it all worked. Like they they the way they talk to each other. I kind of actually was like, this seems like Han um, and Chewie talking. I really it sounds worse on paper. Their relationship together. It sounded worse on paper when I heard the Rancor scene, and it did. It was so quick. And they didn't. They didn't build on it. They didn't harp on it enough to make you be like, oh my god, they're doing the Rancor scene. It's just like you're like, oh, this is the Rancor scene, and then they cut to the creature, and you're like, I guess that kind of like gets your attention. But uh, you were saying even before they showed it, like you can, you know, you could totally tell what the creature is. And then it's what's the creature that's gonna eat Han? Chewbacca. Uh, I don't know how I feel about they're feeding people. They're feeding humanoids to Chewbacca. And he's eating raw people? I thought Chewbacca is like... Don't rip your freaking arms But off. I thought Chewbacca's like a normal person. Like, he cooked the pork. Like, he eats... He cooks food. He wears a bandolier. He's <laughs> <laughs> like... <laughs> like, that's his clothes. Like, he talks. He can drive a car. Like, I, he I is... I picture him wearing an apron whenever he barbecues. He's very... Pork. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> he's very intelligent. So, why is he eating raw people? Just because they're starving him to death yeah. in that cage? Oh, yeah. What the... And then... But then he's... And I heard this interview. He's too much of a wuss to eat the freaking porg in front of the porgs. He's eating raw people to stay alive. But he won't eat a porg in front of porgs. Oh, man. That's a different movie. Different. <laughs> we, we already talked about it, that this movie is clearly better than The Last Jedi. If, what, if, you, not, if you saw Last Jedi and that completely turned you off to everything, I could. This movie wasn't a complete waste of time. I could crap in a bowl and film it, and it would be a better movie than Last Jedi. I know, but but we're oh. here today to talk about Solo. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about how he got his stupid name because that. Oh well, we're gonna okay. Before we go there, I keep I keep procrastinating. Uh, I hated when he started talking in Wookie. It it sounded stupid. It, it, it was real dumb. I, I I would have rather him personally. just like negotiated with him and like I don't know maybe you could have found a way to make it be like you understand me like he understands that it's like weird that I, he understands but I didn't I, and then he talks another language later so that's his other power is he speaks all languages and he's a he's a he's a Mary Solo but he, but it's Han Solo he's he bad. speaks all languages that was the thing they never showed him. Sp- I don't know. Where is the? He always could speak to like the astro droids. He could always. Speak Everyone Chewbacca. can speak. He could always speak Hutnese. Like he could speak a lot of these languages. He could John speak is his Greedo. boss. He, he could talk to Greedo. Like I mean, he could. No, talk to all he could speak people. a lot. Of, he can speak a lot of languages now. He could speak the languages of the people he worked with in that movie. He worked for his boss. Greedo was his Look, nemesis. I, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm kind of buying it. Like as far as like at this age, like at this range, like to me, it reminded me at this like, age, living it, in an orphanage, it, it his reminded, entire life, then being shipped out to the military in a one second montage. He learned every language ever, even though he's clearly doesn't want to be in the military. He's clearly just get, passing time. But he was there for three years. <laughs> oh man. Uh, how much time passes after that? Do they tell us? Is it another year after there's those like later? No longer in the military. If you figure it out. No, he was a deserter after that, and then that's whenever he. Oh, that's when he gets thrown into the pit. And then oh, okay. joins Woody Harrelson. Okay. All right. Um, so let's talk about his stupid name. He's like, Garvey. I'm already a deserter. I might as well ride, you know, ride your leg a little more, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so his name is garbage apparently so Han Solo is ruined forever uh, because Han Solo is not his name he only has one name like Cher not pr- what I, I, I probably like not because like 
sting. Not for a cool I, I reason. Don't like sting or jewel. Not for I mean. a cool reason, but because he's such an orphan. Jubilee. He's such an orphan that his parents didn't even give him a last name. Oh God, life is terrible. And he's like, well, you've got to have something on the registry, and it's like, well, here, here like I that's the worst. That's the worst I because can't. they didn't ruin Han Solo that much, but they ruined his name. So every time he's on screen in any movie, it's like ruined, 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 ruined. It's ruined. like how you like that Han Solo. God, my name's Han Solo. They call me Han Solo, right? That's what the action figure Give says. Give back my name. The action figure says if you tape that stupid spatula to your hand, that looks like uh, there's apparently it has a computer chip in it that reads. The, these the action force figures <laughs> the, the force link he goes they call me Han Solo which ruined the whole movie because you knew that he got his name which is stupid a lot of stupid things like like Thurm Scissor Punch and Six Eyes at the table I sat there and I just started naming the other characters because I knew all their names were stupid garbage I was like well if that's Thurm Scissor, Scissor Punch and that's Six Eyes I was like well that's two heads clearly right there to the left <laughs> I was like that's black guy uh, what are we doing with the names? What is happening? Six Eyes is worse than Therm Scissor Punch. Especially because Six Eyes literally was like... At least Six Eyes was in they're, quotes. They're, they're Six are, Eyes is a nickname. It comes on the Denny's cards. And it's uh like whatever his name but, is, but Six Eyes, had, whatever. I know, but they already had like the same creature with three eyes. Like it was like... Yeah, they didn't call him Three uh, Eyes. They respected that character and gave him a name. But okay, so so you only got one name. What's your name? What's your name, sir? Han. What's your last name? I ain't got no last name. And he doesn't even say like cool. He's like, I ain't got no last name. And he's like, well, who are your people, son? Which is a cool Star Wars moment because they're like using weird terminology. They're not using Earth talk, thank God. And they're like, he's like, what's your people? What's your tribe? So that's cool. Like that's how they say their last names and stuff. Uh, and but then they ruin that by following it up with like, I don't know, I'm alone. I'm so, so alone. I got no one here like, beside so me. I'm running so low. I'm running so low. <laughs> like, so then the guy's like, hmm. The this just just like just fat white guy, like just like pfft, like uh, imperial guard, like the not cool guys that are on the Death Star in uh, episode four, but are like dressed like Grand Moff Tarkin and it's all like that stuff. The people like watch out, Darth Vader will. Check <laughs> <you out>. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but the, it's, she's just awful, just looking. It's just, uh, just the most boring, boringness. And and then he's like, "Well, hmm, I'll call you Solo." And you know, he goes home and screws his fat wife. It was yeah. ugly too. It's like, "Oh, call me Solo." And he just uh, it, so it's like so that's a. I will give it to him because it doesn't didn't feel like it, but that's almost like a immigration into the United States, like you know, getting uh, your name changed at the border so that to Americanized. But it didn't really feel like it, so I'm not gonna say like that was a why are you turning Star Wars into America? Uh, it was similar, but it didn't feel preachy in that way where it's like we're clearly telling you about America. It really did feel like I guess that tribes that tribes thing really sold it. Yeah. Because America is riding so low. Riding so, low. <laughs> um, so uh, the 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 Wookiee language was awful. I could have done without I, that. I, I personally think he never that, uses it again. Why do we need it? Look, I, I think because well, he's not going to use it in a future movie. Why do we need to know no, but, that he can speak it? But but I think the fact that like. Somehow Chewbacca was like understanding him good, even though he already understood Yoda and Attack of the Clones and <laughs> understands fucking. English. I just thought everyone understands Wookiee like everyone. Oh, not everyone, I guess. Some people do, but I thought half but half that's one of his superpowers. He understands all languages. But like everybody understands. No, I guess R two too. I guess most most people do understand R two though, but some people don't. That's the joke. Is that R two is always? It really does sound like he's always cussing. Like I know that's now become like a meme. But if you watch those movies, it really does oh. sound like he, they're like, oh, R2. Like, <laughs> he's like cussing yeah. people out. It's like, Bleh. Yeah, I think C-3PO does kind of like, oh, R2. Like, you know, like, you know, he's at least using R2. some droid slurs. That's and for then, sure. Like, and then the fucking Mark Hamill really drops the bomb in that last Jedi and actually like, he's like, language. Oh, so, I so I even heard a spoiler review where the guy was just like, yeah, C-3PO's in it. C-3PO is not in this movie. 
Anthony Daniels' voice is in this movie uh, attached to a C-3PO ripoff that is clearly doesn't look like C-3PO. It doesn't even look like the C-3PO whatever unit from episode one. But it is like more silverish and it just looks like a ripoff. And they do that again later where... There's a Wookiee ripoff. I heard people, someone saying also that like it's like uh, it's not it's like just a differentish Wookiee, and I'm like that's not a Wookiee. Whatever that is is not a Wookiee. It's like similar to a Wookiee. It's like what if Disney? What does Disney? If what if we created Wookies? Uh, it looks ugly as sin. Uh, it just looks like a Bigfoot. It's just basically a Bigfoot. Oh, let's talk about Chewbacca's feet. They were hideous. My God, I mean, that CGI close-up of his feet when you're like, what's the creature? And I'm like, I know that ain't Chewbacca because what are those? Uh, <laughs> I mean, feet, Why could you like see his toes? Why wasn't his fur just like overlapping? the toes? You could see his individual toes. It almost looked like humanoid. Like what you imagine, like Bigfoot feet toes. They've never shown Chewbacca's. Another question answered. They've never shown Chewbacca's feet. I always wanted to know. You know I was like, hey, what does the rest of Chewbacca look like from the knees down? Next time we will see his butt crack. <laughs> if it had been the last... I'm surprised, actually, we didn't see it in The Last Jedi. I was going to say, like, if it had been in The Last Jedi, we would have seen some butt crack. And he even went out on the island. With you know, I, I like that Wookiee. Yeah. Mm. I know. And she does like that Wookiee. And she's got... What, another Wookie. character not in this movie? Or oh, well, before we go on? Uh, right, so Mala, not in this movie. Itchy, not in this movie. Lumpy, not in this movie. It was some Wookiee ugly ripoff. It was like their their own Bigfoot. Uh, also confirmed not for this movie. What's her name? Maz Kanata. Maz Kanata, not in this movie. See, I, so, thought, I thought I saw her in the trailer, but it turns out it's some other thing that it almost looks like it could be like this, a similar species. But it has like four forearms, and it, it looks very um, similar in the face and that, stuff like that. Yeah, that remind. Oh, that's what I want to talk about. That character. That's John Favreau. I hated almost every single thing he said because he never said it with any meaning. Like his inflection never changed. He's always just like, "Here's my line," and now here's this other line about something sad, and now here's this other line about something happy, and now here's this. Li- Every single thing he said, like he didn't give a shit about what he said. Well, I, and I don't think it's that John Favreau didn't. It's like the character didn't, and like maybe they didn't tell him what he was supposed to be. I don't know. How do you not realize you're saying it the exact same way every single line, and not, like your character's not showing anything? Oh my god, when he died, when he, you know, five seconds after we meet him, when he died, and then oh, I'm dying. Oh, so bad. And then he's like Han. You don't want to die solo. Uh, or whatever garbage comes I out of know. his mouth. I gotta say, there's a lot of moments. You're giving this movie a lot of passes. And it does get enough passes. Like, I don't know. It's middle of the road. But I'll say, I didn't hear a single word that came out of a lot of characters' mouth. Because a lot of the times, it was just like, garbage, 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 garbage coming out of their mouth. It, it wasn't a compelling script. I'll tell you that much. Yeah, but I oh might... It was the boring, no one asked for, blast of everyone, the summer. Everyone kept calling it a really funny but, uh, buddy comedy, t- buddy cop movie. I don't think it's that either. I don't think it's a buddy cop movie. I don't think it's super hilarious, and I, I'm not as a bad way. I don't think it's like trying to be. I think it could use less humor, not ne- less humor, but less of that type of humor coming out of Han Solo. It is... I'll say I wasn't comparing them. Like everyone's saying that after they see the movie, they're not comparing him to Harrison Ford. Because he's not... I don't know what the big... I think Disney was just doing that so that if the movie bombed, that they could blame that. And I don't think any of that was ever true about him acting bad. He's not even trying to do Harrison Ford. There's a couple lines where he is like nailing Harrison Ford like almost by accident. Because it's like, that's how you would say that line if you were like, if that was your attitude. But there's a lot of times where, I don't know. I would have... What I really wanted, all right, let's fix it. What I really wanted to see was them already friends. I wanted to see, uh, I wanted to I see, wanted to see Jabba the Hutt. I wanted to I see, wanted to see Bubba no, Fett. I wanted to see Han and Chewie on their. This is like their thirty seventh mission, and they're already like good 
Like they already have a good rapport where they have good teamwork. And I wanted to see them use teamwork kind of like they did in The Force Awakens. See more of like them on the mission and them in their prime. Of a story that had nothing to do with anything I'd ever heard before. I have never wanted to see the Kessel Run ever. And it was horrible. It That was one of the worst parts of the entire movie. It was boring and yeah, dumb. No, but I heard, I heard the whole beginning was boring and I was like... I feel like that was all kind of cool and the end of the world of Star Wars. I by the time I got to the Castle Run, it was like, this is just like the boring ship scene that I usually like to fast forward. I imagined like some sort of terrain similar to that in the of the pod race of like that scenery of him like having to go in like these canyons and like get a smuggle of drugs to somewhere and he's getting shot at by the bounty hunters. And that he gets it there in whatever 12 parsecs is. And what I imagined in my head, and I'm sure everyone will probably agree, even no matter what they imagined, was way better than what they showed us. What they showed us was a bunch of nothing. And a bunch of CGI nothing. And they took the Kessel Run and made him take a shortcut. He said, oh, I'll take this shortcut. So it's like, what's impressive about it? It was not that it was a bunch of time. And it wasn't necessarily... That didn't, about the didn't they come out and like in like there's a star destroyer like in the in like the, apparently the only uh, thing that was impressive about twelve parsecs was it like it will take you twenty parsecs and he's like I'll do it in twelve and they're like no it takes twenty parsecs and it's like I don't know and they're like we're telling you twenty and it's like they just really hammered it in like like don't tell me the odds. Oh, That's what he I didn't even have think like, about that. He should so, have like, don't tell me the odds. I'm I'll now thinking know. about it. I heard a lot of hype about these dice, about people being like, it's so stupid how much of the dice are in it. The dice are only in it three times, and the dice do nothing. Um, Why does she bad. hand him the dice? They were fucking throwing it in your face in the beginning. Why? The they do the, oh, no, they do the dice bit twice. It makes no sense. It's the rule of three. He get, he grabs the dice. We even were wondering if we were going to see that in the opening minute that we missed, because... We're waiting for the rule of three because she, he gets the dice. Uh, when when they get pulled away, she has the dice and they have a close up of the dice in her hands. And the dice, by the way, are are the chance cubes that they sell when you buy Star Wars games. Because for years we've been saying the chance cubes are stupid. That's not what he uses in Episode One. Well, this is all they did one thing for sure, right? This is probably the best part of the movie for me. Han's dice are just chance cubes that we already have. Like you have some, I have some that are just spray painted gold, and that's pretty awesome. Uh, because now, only for the reason that now the chance cubes aren't stupid that we've had all these years that we've been complaining about, they finally made them like cool. That's pretty sweet. Now chance, those chance cubes exist. So now there's two different kinds of chance cubes in the world. There's like one that's red and blue that's like basically like flipping a coin, and then this one that's like a six-sided chance cube. It's more like a die. They're both six-sided, but... Um, oh, this is like six different. The, the, the red and blue one is like there's three red and three blue. And yeah, it's two it's outcomes. Six yeah, two, outcomes two outcomes on that. And then this one has six outcomes. Um, what else happens? Oh, the castle run. Uh, they talk yeah. about these giant creatures. They're trying to rip off when they go through the asteroid field. And they're like, no, you can never go through that asteroid field. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, and then there's a bunch of giant creatures and then it's just a CGI garbage fest and they fly and they literally do a scene from the Green Lantern one of the most hated movies ever made where they have Han Solo fly towards the gravity thing and then the creature is going to get the creature which is bigger than the ship it shouldn't have to fight as much gravity as the ship does, we'll get sucked in, but the ship will be fine. And in order to trick the creature, it just shoots the, uh, the the escape pod. And the creature, instead of continuing to chase the thing it's already locked onto, sees a smaller dinky thing kind of floating towards something that might be dangerous. It, the, the, the scene assumes that the creatures are unfamiliar with this territory that it freaking lives in. They live here and it's like, it's never seen the black hole. It doesn't know if it gets near that thing, that it's a bad thing, that it's going to get sucked into it and die. The creature that freaking lives here has never seen the black freaking hole. That They even like make lines like it's a famous black hole or, or whatever the garbage they say. They're not surprised to see the black hole. Just the creature that lives here. They're like, oh, it's one of those black holes. 
And then so the creature goes after the escape out. And that is so dumb. And I just, the creature looks really horrible at the, when it's getting, it looks less horrible at first, but then when it's getting sucked into the black hole, it looks really horrible. It reminds me of those stupid creatures in Force Awakens. What are they called? Like Rothgars or something? One of those things? The circles? Those are the only creatures I didn't like in, in The Force Awakens. On the, on uh, that, uh, after they go back to her, like, so she gets kidnapped and she's got a V in her dress because this is Millie Clark, right? Who's famous for taking off her clothes in Game of Thrones. And she's got this little V, this little tiny mini cleavage thing. And then they get separated for three years and they meet again. And it's like, you know, they've aged. They, they show passage of time. And it's like her dress is aged with the passage of time too. Because now like the it's like looks like the same dress. But the V is deeper. And like the jewel at the top is bigger. Like somehow the dress is freaking aging. <laughs> like she's not taking it off. Uh, yeah, so... Completely evil, the whole movie. You can tell she's evil. And she, there's a couple scenes where she's like trying to like show like she likes him and it works, but like for the most part, they have no chemistry. They, it's not even not that they have no chemistry. It's like the movie doesn't like focus on their chemistry, which I think is kind of important. We should focus on the chemistry. It seems important if we're going to try to do this rip off of uh, take away everything that Princess Leia ever did. Right, this is clearly like every scene was like, oh look, it's that time when Han Solo was about to make out with Princess Leia. And now, every time you see that, you'll think of Amelia Clark in this movie that kind of sucks. I know, but, but I also thought like, whenever he was like, what did you think I would leave without giving you a goodbye kiss? And like, it's like, is, is he really just like taking it out on Leia because he's like all hung up on Quira over so, here. Like, he goes stupid. So we think that the card, we thought the card game was going to be the best scene of the movie, and it's really just kind of, yeah. uh, nothing really eventful, not really any great moment. I mean, the, There's the, no, there should have been some cool music. The, the second part, the better part, because like he actually wins. The yeah, that's what's part. really stupid. It makes the whole card game useless because we're all sitting here thinking the only reason they'd be showing this is because this is him winning the Millennium Falcon, and then the scene ends and he loses, and it's like, well, then what did we watch this for? But he's like, but I like your style. I like the cut of your jib. Oh. I'll let you fly it. Oh. That's stupid. Uh, it's a waste of a scene, because then we gotta go back to it later, because I thought we just wouldn't go back to it, but then there's and what is literally an after credit like really they end the movie which what I would literally call an after credit scene even though it's before the credits but it's it was so out of place and so just kind of hokey it was clearly an after credit scene where Han goes back and gets it back later from Lando well I would hate to lose in what Lando's wearing because I don't want to be the dude that lost the yeah, uh, Millennium Falcon wearing a Flintstones shirt. Hawaiian shirt whatever he's yeah. wearing good lord if, if Fred Flintstone went to Hawaii. <laughs> I mean... Um, I'd have Barney Rubble beat my ass. Yeah, so... Not, I mean, there should have been, like... I don't know. It should have been a, a real, like, cool moment of, like, getting to know all these characters. Everyone at the card table should have been in on the heist, right? We should... Those... It should have been less people at the table. It should have just been, like, five to six characters, uh, maybe, uh, focus on... And, like, give them their character, like beats and then that should have been they should have been added to the heist and now we know these characters that, that's how you would do it oh my gosh when their when their ankles oh, were, were when their ankles were chained together it was I rolled my eye I did roll my eyes at that I was like we're gonna do everything from every heist movie ever just we just spun up we looked up top 100 things that have ever happened in heist movies and you saw like oh the classic shackled together and we run you run one way and I run the other oh my god guys that, that was a moment where I was like, this isn't Star Wars. But it quickly ended. A lot of the movie was Star Wars. A lot of the movie quickly ended. Like, <laughs> like every scene, like, I mean, like, it had a lot of everything. So, nothing we, really happened. So, we meet a lot him, of everything happened. We meet Quira's boss, and it's Vision, who sounds like Vision the whole time, and that is not menacing because we all know Vision is a giant pussy. And he's just gonna be vision the whole movie. And his power is—it's not a power, but it's like powers of like if you are unfaithful to me, I will fucking kill you. His power is like <laughs> that when he gets mad, his scars that are just lines become really bushy lines. Now, I heard this described in reviews, and it sounded way cooler. 
like red lines started growing. It sounded like they got thicker. Like like almost like it would like maybe not look like a human face anymore. I thought it was gonna be cool. It wasn't. It wasn't at all. It's the stupidest reason to not call somebody a human because I don't know if we're supposed to think he's a human or not. Just scars on his face that grow with rage. It's just slightly grow. Just almost not even noticeable. Almost don't even know like maybe just your eyes are messing up. Like I don't know, maybe do I need to go to the hospital? Did my eyes just finally go out? What's happening? You can't, so unnoticeable. So ridiculous. Uh, so vision. Yeah, were you intimidated by vision? I kept saying the whole movie just ripped that piece of his forehead out. I mean, I the whole time I thought that he already. I was like, that's his weak spot. The forehead. I, I just joked to myself like he already looks like Thanos ripped his fucking thing out. Like, he felt I, like he I, was in a different Star Wars movie. Like, I felt like he was in the Marvel movie and he got a stone ripped out and he like didn't know where he was and he was just like Bleh. I wouldn't necessarily say like it wouldn't work in Star Wars it didn't work in this movie like I don't know I almost would say it didn't it wouldn't work in Star Wars like he's from a movie that's not Star Wars but given a movie about Star Wars that was all in that type of tone it could work if the movie did work but I wouldn't let Disney do it that's for sure <laughs> oh boy um so then what happens well uh they uh, they meet the Marauders. The Marauders are cool. And his nest is cool. They try to steal their cargo. And Han Solo almost gets everybody killed. Right? That's pretty cool. Uh, so, another thing uh, I want to talk about. Something that really bothered me in the movie. Because I think, actually, that um, there's many moments in this movie that are directed really well. And it's very beautiful. But I think there's also a little uh, many moments that are directed poorly. And maybe not even from a director's standpoint, but maybe an editor's... I don't know who's in charge of it or whatever. It's probably maybe the editor, the voiceover people. The voiceover on or this movie. because they have two directors. Maybe it was like a cut and paste, like... Every director, single person... The other director. All the stormtroopers, when Han was like walking through the, the airport, all of the stormtroopers sounded like they were like right by his head. I'm like... Everyone is at the same volume, and they all sounded like they weren't really there. Like, a lot of the sound effects sounded like those people weren't really there. And there were a lot of times when they would cut away from the person talking, even though it was like a human. Like, they cut away from Val, the black chick. She was talking or something, and they were show, like, show over here. And then, like, when she was done talking, they cut back, like, almost like they couldn't have, like, like you're saying, like, maybe they didn't have the scene. Maybe she said something different there, and they voiceovered it, and then cut to her just standing there to change it. Like, there were so many times... When it felt like things that people were saying were clearly voiceovered, and it, it was a very bad uh, VA job, man. It, uh, whatever it's, is that what it's called? I forget what it's called. Uh, the voiceover, the, it was bad, and I guess maybe that's not Ron Howard's problem. But there were other moments that were just kind of directed weird. Uh, not yeah, not, but there, there was also some nicely directed things, though. I mean, yeah, nothing necessarily comes to the top of my mind right this minute. Maybe we'll talk about it later. But nothing comes off to the top of my mind of like a, poor, uh, a specific, like just poorly directed, like that. Um, S J W D three. No wait, what's her name? L three G B T, A K A R two Me two. Um, it's crazy. I will say this. Um, I heard everything about this. I, I could not get away. Uh, L3 is my robo waifu. She's thick AF. You know what I'm saying? She's, uh, she's hot. She hot. Uh, finally, the Star Wars universe has made it uh, allowable for us to sexualize all of the characters. Uh, even the robots. Hey, good, 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 good. Good. <laughs> Roger, Roger. Well, I think our C-3PO was... Getting in on with some of them. Somebody. I think the him and R2-D2 were, were, <laughs> were getting it on. So, I a big thing about everyone's freaking out, Lando is pansexual. So, I've heard Lando is super pansexual. I've heard, oh, it's, it's just that one comment at the card scene uh, and there's nothing more. Let me tell you this, everybody. Lando bangs... <laughs> everything around oh so you went to go get popcorn for a second so you, well, there was a moment you were like you were like I'm I'm done <laughs> you walked out and what did you what was <laughs> Look, I, 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 had, I, I had to pee no okay. but there was something though I, I remember ha, I had to pee 
Because it was literally like as soon as that droid showed up, it was like I, I don't know, dude. Like the movie was going so good that that droid showed up, and it was like the droid was barely in it. Lando was barely in it. I was like, I felt like I just missed the whole thing. Like, so they, you they left, weren't even fucking he in left, there. and then they cut to that chick is in Lando's closet, which apparently was like a promo thing for this movie of like the actor like going around showing Lando's room and Lando's closet. And like his closet is full of capes. He's coming out of the closet. And they. they <laughs> <laughs> yes! Oh my goodness. All right. Nailed it. Um, she's in there and they're like making fun of how many capes he has and I'm just like why does this need to be a thing why did we need to like comment why did we even need to show even if they hadn't said anything about the capes I would have been like why are there like a bunch of capes everywhere why, why did he wear a cape so all he has in that closet shirt? so all he has in this <laughs> giant walk in closet is two rows of capes and a and a skiff guard <laughs> uniform <laughs> and, a, and a terrible yellow shirt <laughs> And a Hawaiian Flintstone shirt. That's all he owns because we saw his closet. Um, and apparently he is the same size as Queera because then she just wears one of his capes and it's just perfectly like drapes the floor and she looks fabulous in it. And she's gonna, yeah. Uh, so yeah, she looks fabulous. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you but. left. So then, uh, so they they cut back to the. They go. They cut to them doing whatever, and then they cut back to the Falcon, and just uh, my goodness. I mean, I, I came uh, back this is what you in, missed. This is what came you back missed. just in time. She's to see like, her get messed up, man. She, she she pops the chair back, and she's like doing like a cool like you know like how it's like isn't it crazy how the robot acts human? And she's like, so uh, like clearly Han's in love with you, and then uh, Amelia Clark is like, what? Like, look, no, like, we haven't seen each other in three years. Like, this, 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 and that. And she's like, no, no, I know. Because uh, he looks at you in that way. It's the same way Lando looks at me. And then she makes it, I, I, I liked it at first because I didn't think it was going to go any further. But uh, but then she's like, but then it really sunk in. And I was like, no, that didn't ring right. But she's like, it's just like Lando and me. And she's she's kind of like he wants to bang me, but I won't let him because it's a, it's not a work professional. Like she kind of makes this joke like that, like basically like insin- like we can tell as the audience that she wants to bang him too. And basically they both want to bang each other. It sounds like they haven't banged yet, uh, but they want to bang, and that there's sexual tension. Like I bet they bang. And they might maybe she just gave it him a, been maybe she just tip, gave him a just the tip. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, um, so then Amelia Clark goes, what we're all thinking, she's like, oh, like, how would that even work? Everything you've she, heard no, here, is right, true. Right, here, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for real. She goes, how would that even work? And if you would just cut the scene right there, it might have been like, okay, might have been half, you know, like, you might have been able to forget about it enough, but they like, they gotta fucking drive it home, and she's like, oh, how would that even work? And then L3BGT looks at her and she goes, she turns her head real snappy, right? She's like, she's a snappy. She don't need no male droid. to. All the backstory of her is not even in the movie. None of that BS she built herself. She don't need no um, black droid to tell her how to live her life. All that stuff. Uh, she goes, uh, she goes, uh, <laughs> how would that work? And she goes, it works. Meaning... L3BGT has for sure had sex with a human, even if it wasn't Lando. And at the moment, you can see her little eye socket in the frame, and I'm like, oh, it it was gross. I feel like BB-8 can be like an anal bead for her. (laughs) (laughs) Then, then, uh, were you back then when she like walks up to a computer and like, like they didn't build it up. This should have been built up. Here's what, here's what's, Crazy. I was gone for like two minutes. Like, it's so scary. much happened. It's scary to be like nothing. Like the Here, whole thing happened in like two. Here's minutes. two things that are crazy. One, she's not an SJW at the beginning of the film. I think she's just like she's in the. So she's in a three stage process, like finding out about SJWs, starting to become one, and then becoming one, and like in an arc, and like we're in her and fucking dying, and we're in her second phase. So we missed the first phase, but she's like has like started like 
it, she's interested in it. Maybe I'll become an SJW. Somebody. You know, I'm kind of tired of all this stuff. And it's weird. Like, they didn't just have her already in SJW. We watch an arc of a character, of a robot becoming an SJW. I threw up in the theater on a little kid. They didn't really like that. That, that was me. <laughs> it was your kid or that was you? I blacked out. That it was, was awful. Uh, was so, she then walks up to a pro, one of the droids and she... Pops the restraining bolt off of it. Looking for a distraction. But they don't build it up. They're not like, we need a distraction. None of this happens. She just like, we're like, get told in the aftermath. She's like, I created a great distraction. I'm like, you should have freaking told us you were, what is this? Do you not know how to tell a story? And and so she like, pops the bolt off. And in a joke, which I, the joke was fine. And, but I didn't think, but for the joke to be what builds this entire thing is dumb. And like, she's just like, all right, go on, get out of here. She's like, he's like, what am I supposed to do? She's like, I don't know. You're free. Beat it. Just get out of my way. And then she's just like working on the computer. She basically just did that to get him out of the way so that she could yeah. work the computers. And then that droid goes and does another un- does another droid's restraining bolt. And then it all just keeps dominoing. And then there's just droids wackily, like a Daffy Duck cartoon-like fashion, wa- just whopping and whooping and hollering over all the... Con- ooh, ooh. All the, <laughs> all the controls. That one that was just stepping on the controls, on the control button, that's what I pictured in my head. It was Daffy Duck just doing a little waddle across it. I love me some Daffy Duck. Uh, <laughs> and I think you came back at that. And then, then it just keeps escalating to the point that there is like just a war. And here's the point that doesn't make any sense. They're like shooting at the Rebels. Or, no, these aren't the Rebels. Whatever the heck they are. Uh, they, they call them Rebels. Like, this is like... From what I gather, this is completely like, like rebel. So, well, so they're shooting at the, their crew, but it's a droid revolution. Why are they shooting at any of the humans? It doesn't make any sense. They're like, there should be like one thing. It's like, who are we shooting at? Anything that's a freaking robot, shoot it. Like that's what the, the captains told their soldiers. Why would they be getting shot at at all? It makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. Uh, but then she props the thing off, and as the revolution is happening, she says to the intercom, she's like, I found my calling. This is great. Like, she becomes an SJW before our very eyes. She, like, sees the good and what she's done. I'm just like... Well, I mean, but look where that got her. She's just... She's clearly black supposed to be a black woman. It, the whole thing is clearly, like, robots are black people. It's like, robots are people, too. And robot lives matter. And all this ridiculous yeah, BS. They're, they're, they're so good. And her line, like, all of her cool lines in the trailers weren't necessarily ruined. I mean, they were kind of ruined, but it was more the execution that ruined it than how bad the line was. I mean, she sounds like she's got baby. The cool lines in the trailer were more about SJW stuff than they were cool stuff. Yeah. uh. And then at the end, so Amelia Clark's not in any of this fight, and everybody's fighting, fighting, fighting. And then L3 gets killed, and it's freaking awesome. And they go back to the thing. And then she, it, Elf, like, and then she comes like, out of nowhere like with holding. It she like. wasn't in the entire fight, and she comes out of nowhere with two giant grenades in her hand. Throws the one grenade, throws the other grenade, and then starts to belittle everyone and says, "What are you all doing? Getting the thing? What have you been doing? What have we been doing? We were fighting the thing. You were in the ship doing nothing. Yeah. What are you complaining about? Well, Thanks for finally showing up and helping. Uh, but." L three GBT's death is so ridiculous. Han, uh, it is clearly there's all these moments where Lando is like looking over, like she's like, "You need to help me clean this later," and it's like she's got something stuck up her butt or something. It's so weird, and uh, and like clearly they, it is almost like really implied that they do it or like there's some sort of like he's almost feels obligated to do it, like almost like she's an yeah. ugly chick that he's. Like got conned into he's marrying or something. It's blood. really weird. Like he doesn't like he's guilt. He feels guilty about the things he does with her, but he does them. And so and they really like kind of hinted the, the, earlier. They pulled. You missed it. They both pulled the thing on the Millennium Falcon back together, no, and their hands touched, and they threw up again no, on the other kid beside me. It was awful. Because they did that several times. They did it with Han and Chewie. And it's like, are they banging? Why did you do it with them? Because they're the pilot and co-pilot. Did they do that in the other movies where they do it together? 
Do they have it in episode four? Do they do it together? Please comment below if they do it together in episode four. What in the actual F? Their hands are touching, and they're like, I think they even gave each other a little sign eye. And they're like, mm. It was like Brokeback Mountain. Let's bring it on. Where was, let's pop in the old stuff. <laughs> See if there's some sexual tension? No. She I dies. Don't. She I, I just meant, do they ever like do it at the same time? Oh, I like, <laughs> like, grab that. I don't know why. I'm not expecting sexual tension <laughs> ever there. But. She dies, and Lando jumps through all these like falling debris and bullets and stuff. Like, no, it's so ridiculous. Like He's they did. Like, no, my sex box. It's not earned in any way because they haven't made us care for any of these characters. I don't give a fuck. But they're barely oh, in it. They're God. barely in it. They don't build on any of these characters. They needed way more character work if they the wanted us to care at this point. You don't care about Lando. Oh, excuse, excuse me. The only person I cared about was Han and Chewie. I didn't even mean to say Lando because I felt like he was barely in the movie. You don't care about Lando or L3 and you're sitting him watching him like risk his life to get her body. He tries to pull her up and the bottom half doesn't come up and the top half rips off and I laughed out loud in the theater. It was ridiculously comical and I felt bad that I was ruining the movie for any of the idiots in the theater but I was like oh my god yeah there, there was that one stupid chick next to us oh she wasn't happy but I she was, wasn't happy but I wasn't happy with her you know. even though I won't I'm not gonna give this movie a complete F there were good parts to it you know uh, I would say I, I don't mind ruining this movie for other people while they're enjoying it because I want this movie to bomb for justice, for the last, for the last Jedi, for Jake Skywalker. All right, now uh, we'll talk about I think one of the you know bum 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 you know the fucking the surprise cameo that popped out of nowhere that really felt like it went nowhere and like it just came out of left field. I thought everything that they did with it was okay looking, but it just came out of left field with Darth Maul. Oh, okay. So up out yeah. of nowhere, like immediately when they showed it, like I don't, I heard it made me think of Rogue One. The Emperor. It made me think of Rogue One, and a lot of people who don't like Rogue One will say either the whole movie was terrible except for the end with Vader or some people say the whole movie was terrible except for Vader and they'll still give it a pass because the Vader was in it it's like that's like a five minute fan film like don't give the whole movie a pass because of that and now you can like it if you want but if you don't like it don't give it a pass because of that scene if the whole rest of the movie you didn't like and I don't have problems with every scene in the movie but the characters are so unlikable in Rogue One it's just that Jen so man she's the only one and the Cassian Andor I hate him more she's, than her she's just Jesus. I hate both of them, and there are leads, and they're so unlikable, and they don't ever have them save the cat. It's ridiculous. The robot's great, K2SO. The blind guy's great. His lover is... Yeah, it's all right. No, they're fine. Um, blind guy's cool. The blind guy reminded me of, uh, on the... What is it? The Force Unleashed, his master is blind. It really reminded me of that. And then they did that on Rebels with... What's with his name? Kanan. Yeah. That always reminds me of that game. That's the first one time they did that that I can remember. At least in a media. They might have done it in a comic book or something. So that was really cool. Um, yeah, so Darth Maul shows up sitting. He can't be bothered to stand. Yeah, in robot so, legs. But people thought immediately, like... I heard some people say that they thought it was the Emperor. And it was clearly not the Emperor. Because, like, you could see... It should have been the Emperor. when they showed it, it was robot legs at the bottom. Yeah, but you might have thought they were boots. I couldn't necessarily. Uh, I, mean, I, I could tell. Like, I but was there's like, also robots in Star like, Wars. It could have been if if we hadn't found out about that, it could have been I IG-88. I, I don't mean, know. I'm very familiar with you know the Clone Wars and the Rebels of the Darth Maul parts, and I just I knew that was him. Like I could tell, and kind of already heard it. But I mean, you could just tell. And he stands like, there, and, and he's, the, they, he stands they, up so you can hear the robot legs go. Sh -sh -sh -sh. And then he turns on the stupid lightsaber. It's the actual new one. New Rebels, Rebels one. Because they're going to basically like just... Want. They're going to try to do Obi-Wan as the next movie and then just do what they did in Rebels but make it two hours. I don't know. I, I We've seen every single part 
of to, Obi-Wan's life from uh, okay. birth, from not birth, from Padawan to after death. I really don't see why we need an Obi-Wan movie. I don't see why we need a Rogue One movie. I don't see why we need a Han Solo movie. Three movies I didn't ask for. I know everyone else wants an Obi-Wan movie, but we've literally seen every second of his life in all six movies. And The Clone Wars and Rebels. We've seen his life. I don't need that movie. I would rather get a cooler movie. I'd rather get uh, Boba Fett or Jango Fett the movie. I'd rather get Aura Singh the movie. I'd rather get Bosk the movie. Yoda. Yoda the movie. I like the Bounty Hunters. IG-88 the movie. I thought Darth Maul were Obi-Wan's the movie. It's the same movie. L4 dollar <laughs> sign the, or whatever. The love for money. L- L3GBQ2. <laughs> <laughs> like so, do, a, do an Ocean's Eleven with all those yeah. Bounty Hunters from episode 5. Uh, because ain't nobody going to see it. Ocean's 8. Oh, and one thing that was cool is while we're talking about all these like Bounty Hunters like this and that. I was fixing to say Bosk. They actually name dropped Bosk in this movie. Yeah, they did do that. That was pretty cool. They name dropped just about everything. They're like, remember movies? I know, but that was that was cool. Um, because they don't even say his name. Oh, so in so Empire Strikes Back. I didn't, I didn't finish. We talking about Valerie got beat. Val got beat by probe droids because anytime you're on a snow planet, you have to show probe droids because. Uh, Disney hasn't actually watched Star Wars. They've only just been told Star Wars from a third party, and then they take notes. Uh, so she gets so she gets planet. cornered. They have to blow up the thing and the for the train, and she beats like twenty probe droids, and then there's two left, and she can't beat the two. And she's like, "They got me pin." It's like there's two of them. Shoot one, and then they won't have you pin. I don't understand what the problem is. You beat like. 20 is exaggerating, but she might have beat like 8 to 10 of them. There was a lot of probe droids. Oh, they called them like Viper droids? They either called them Viper or Fighter droids. I couldn't remember hear what they said. Yeah, they did kind of call them something else. It might, it might have been Viper. But they look exactly like probe droids on a snow planet. Um, And then, yeah, they kill her. So, that was whatever. Every, I mean, it goes by so Everything. She went by so fast. Everything goes by so fast in this movie. Yeah. At the end, so then, so then, Infus Nessex off her helmet, and she's a good guy now. She's, she's trying to fight the rebellion in her own way from a different angle, and they didn't know. Oh God, we could have been friends the whole time. And Han Solo is gonna betray the bad guy that they've been working. They gotta get this money. Oh, that's what I want to talk about. Literally, no one gives a shit when Val dies at all. Woody Harrelson does not care. He screams when she dies, and then when they have a time to talk, the second they get together, and they're like. The only thing he's mad about is the shipment. He punches Han in the face and you think he's going to be like, that was my wife. It's like, if we're going to, you made us lose the shipment. Like she should have died. I thought he was going to be like, she should have died for something. Like if we're going to have my wife die, then at least we should have got the shipment. But no, he doesn't. He only cares about the shipment. He doesn't even bring her up. He doesn't care at all. It is clear. And then like two more times, it's like clear that nobody cared about this woman. And then so later, I forget who it was. Someone brought her up and I'm like, oh, good. Someone, at least someone in this movie cares about Val. Uh, it was so ridiculous. I, is, I don't know if uh, Ron Howard is a psychopath, a sociopath. He doesn't understand how feelings work. I don't know what that was. Maybe because this movie really has felt like it's sold to eight-year-olds. I don't know. It's sold to like little bitty kids. Like I think they would enjoy it a lot more, uh, and they could probably turn their brain right off. Um, so then he goes, uh, and they're gonna betray the bad guy, right? And then they they go to fight, and then uh, he's like, "Here's all the here's all the things that you wanted: the Carillium, the Obtanium, and." Uh, and now I'm going to betray you because he's like he's like oh this all looks so real and uh, and he's like well I knew you were going to betray me because someone told me you were going to betray me they're waiting in the wings and he's like come in through the wings it was so obvious that it was going to be betrayed it was so obvious him. since the Super Bowl commercial and in walks in yeah, bum bum bum. Woody Harrelson, who did have some moments where it was really funny when he was like, "Oh my thumbs," that was hilarious. Uh, um, yeah, but the whole movie he was just Woody Harrelson. It's like Woody yeah, Harrelson accidentally just got beamed into a Star Wars movie. It was super weird. He was too famous. His voice is too noticeable. 
and he wasn't doing anything with it like it's to try to be like different it was so weird it's very distracting the whole movie he's like now chewy the lesson's supposed to be for han and he was like now chewy there's a lesson to be learned here blah blah it's like for don't forget i'm gonna betray you later it's so ridiculous and then uh he says something the whole movie he's just like uh, oh, if as long as you do this, then as long as you don't have faith in anyone, then you will never be let down. It's just the whole movie. He's setting yeah. him up to be, for, for betrayal, and then he betrays him. Like, no crap. And here's the thing. It's like, it's not a twist because they barely know each other. I don't understand why at all that he would that he would care. I, I, I don't I don't get it. Like, why he wouldn't expect him to turn on him? Like, as if they've known each other for a long amount of time or gone through something special. Nothing in the movie really brought them together. And and the same thing with Lando. I don't believe... Nothing in this movie proved to me that in episode five that he would trust Lando. Lando would hate this Han Solo. Lando got screwed over by Han Solo this entire film. Yes or no? I mean... Uh, Why would he like? He got his wife killed, his robo lover. He like, uh, he, he got out of there. He, he messed everything up for him. He was complaining the whole movie. He kind of did, but there, he ditched them. There, there was this weird like the way that he like did it. Like you can see, like they totally just ripped off what happened in episode five when he meets him. And he acts like he's all... Han you know, Solo acts in episode 5 like there's no way that this guy could betray him. He owes him a favor. And it, it, maybe it'll happen in the next movie, but we're not getting the next movie because no one's going to go see this because screw this movie. It's not worth your money, folks. Sneak in. Torrent it. Whatever you got to do, don't give them money because we're not going to get movies... Uh, I don't know. I, uh, you can't... Let's just say that if Star Wars is fixed with this movie because it, it, it I, I'd still give it like maybe a 5 I, at the end of this, it might go down, but at the most, I'd give it a five. And Star Wars movies used to be eights, nines, tens. It used to be things that couldn't be compared to other things. Like this, even when it's Star Wars, you could compare it to other things. Like it, it's it's weird in that way. It's it's very boring, very mundane. Uh, so then at the end, so he's so okay. Woody Harrelson's gonna betray me. Oh my gosh, we saw it every scene coming. And then Woody Harrelson gets out of there. Oh, then the Infant's Nest is part of the double cross because she's a good guy now, a good girl now. And she's really got, I don't know. She know. Well, I don't get it. What was the thing? She, Han was like, the, the trick is that Han was like, hey, these guys are going to come and try to get you because they're going to think you have the stuff, but you don't. So when they come to sneak up on you, you sneak up on them and get them. And that's the double cross. And uh, and so th- that's weird. And then, uh, so they have a, a three-way fight where first Han is fighting Crimson Dawn is his name. Stupid. He makes him like, like, once you've had Crimson Dawn, you never go back or some horrible, horribleness. And, and <laughs> they fight and then it, Amelia Clark jumps in and you think she's going to help, but then she doesn't help. She like starts fighting Han and then it's like out of it, out of nowhere betrayal because it's not earned because none of these people have spent enough time with each other to care. Like none of these betrayals are like, oh my God, we loved each other. Oh, we did this. Or like, oh, we bonded. Nothing feels earned in this film as characters, like as character moments of like, oh yeah, they would, that would be messed up if they betrayed you. Oh, you shouldn't have seen that coming. Like if I would expect a stranger to betray me and none of these people know each other. Uh, yeah, so they end up just kind of battling it out. It kind of becomes a three-way fight. But then uh, she betrays Han for a split second. And then she's like, and I know you're we- everybody's weakness. And then he's, she's like, my weakness is you. And she turns around and fights the dude. And it's a really lame fight. And she kills him in like a couple seconds with a couple sword thrusts. And it's super not eventful. Uh, which, by the way, they like kind of hint that she's getting raped the whole movie. That's the thing. It's very... I didn't get it at first, but she's got... That's the thing that's America. That was a political agenda, everyone, that is not being discussed in any of these reviews. She has a tattoo 
on her arm, and it's clearly that Pizzagate thing. That chick from Smallville, Al, uh, uh, Alex, whatever her name is, got busted for run for like branding girls uh, on their pubic areas with brands that had her in their initials. They were running sex slave rings. And that's clearly what it is. Is that Quero was this in this sex slave ring that works for Red Dawn or whatever his name is. <laughs> Uh, and it is hinted on almost every scene where they're talking about like whatever horrible thing happened to her is always like everyone gives a look where it's like the only possible thing they could be talking about is rape. It's so weird, so weird. It always feels like that at least at most of the time, if not every time. Um, uh, yeah. So then she kills him. Is super lame. Vision as if enemy super lame he was never terrifying the only thing that was cool was the weapon and it's like they kind of stole that from like last jedi which is like they, yeah they took like the one cool thing from last Jedi. yeah and i didn't like, like it well, we'll give it to vision i didn't like it because it reminded me of the last jedi maybe if it hadn't been in the last jedi i would have liked it but it just i mean it was a cool little like knife weapon blade but it was exactly like what they had in the last jedi it was like that kind of red technology, like laser. It like it wasn't even enough to like cut through that sword. It was like brass knuckles with like little tiny laser things at the ending. That's cool. Like that's the blade. Uh, instead of like being like a sharpened blade, it like turns on a lightsaber edged blade, like the purple things from the prequels. I don't know why they don't make him purple. I get why he would have a red one. That's cool to make him a bad guy. We like kind of know that that's not a lightsaber. But all the people in, uh, all the Praetorian Guards in Last Jedi, they should have been purple. That would have been a cool way to reference the prequels without mentioning them. Like how in The Force Awakens, they just showed General Organa, and that was the only reference to the prequels. Like, there you go. You didn't have to say anything. You just showed a character. He didn't have a line. It's like, they could have just done that. Like, the, like, the weapons could have just been purple for the Praetorian Guards. You could have referenced the prequels. Because I like the weapon. I like that, thinking about that. Like, what is that technology of, like, this purple energy that isn't a lightsaber, but can block a lightsaber. It's really cool. Um, but they never use it for a shield. It's always for like a, a staffed weapon or a sword or something. It's cool. Uh, so yeah, so then the Darth Maul is done. So then she, she dies, Han Solo runs away, and then she like picks up his ring. And this whole, the ring budget on these movies are astronomical. They're trying to sell that ring in The Last Jedi. Now they're trying yeah. to sell maybe one, maybe two rings in this movie, if yeah, not. Yeah, they just want you to buy it's ridiculous. the rings of Star Wars. We got the good guy's ring in the last movie now. We got the bad guy's ring in this movie. It's so dumb. And then she puts it in there, and then she, like, inherits all of the bad guy stuff. And now she's going to be the bad guy, and then she gets the call from Darth Maul, where Darth Maul's like, come to my planet of Darth Maul's from the Clone Wars. And uh, come look at all the cool characters, because we're all just so Wolverined out. You won't believe how amazing cheater character we are. Uh, me and Savage Press and, and Ventress. Ventress is awesome, by the way. All that great stuff, but still a little... The fact that she's related to them, then kind of like... It's like, now it's just way too much. Now it makes her all Wolverined out because she was like special. And now it's like, no, she's just in the Darth she's Maul Club. She's 23 now. She, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Uh, and then, so then the, she's flying away and he's looking up at the ship. And he gets a hand on the shoulder like, oh, don't worry. And it's supposed to be this heartfelt moment. It's like, y'all didn't know each other. Y'all, like, you didn't re-get to know each other. You knew each other, but you haven't seen each other in three years. And there was no moment where y'all, like, went through anything and all this stuff if that's anything, earned. she kind of, like, you know, flip-flopped on you. Yeah. Like, and it's like, I don't feel her. bad. Like, you're supposed to, be like, you're supposed to be like, oh, he's lost his love, and I don't feel it at all. And... Uh, it's weird that they're trying to make us think of this chick every time we think of Princess Leia now. I don't like that. Yeah. It's all this Princess Leia ripoff stuff, and it's and okay. So later, later, so they did the thing with the dice. We never got to the second thing. So then she punches him during one of the things, one of the heists, and gives him the dice. And he looks down as she gets runs away or whatever happens, and he's got the dice and he smiles. And then nothing is ever seen of the dice ever again in the film. What is happening? Uh, he doesn't put them down. He doesn't like look at them again later. He doesn't use them for a plan. Nothing happens with the dice. He back. does whatever he does with them in the next movie. That's not going to happen because we're not paying for this crap. Uh, also missed it. Uh, 
L3 GBT has a penis. No one is talking about that in any of the reviews either. Everyone's talking about her and she's a female and a uh, strong, independent female. She is shown twice in case you missed it the first time and were having doubts. Like, did I just see that she has a penis? What's going on? She twice pulls out a penis and uses it. And then there's, she's shown like pulling anything or things around her crotch area. All the stuff happening around her crotch area. And she has like an R2-D2 thing that comes out of her crotch and or around her crotch it's clearly crotch level it's her dick uh it, it's very weird she's a trainee it's not a girl it's a trainee or trans uh, a transsexual transvestite whatever it yeah. is sjw that is insane no one's talking about that at a review yeah um it's kind of the movie um, all summed up it was uh Oh, and then they, they show their hands as they do the the yeah. blast off. As, as they blast, punch it. as they blast off, as all yeah. the critics would say. Although I mean, the critics would say this movie is a blast. I mean, it was a boring, feel good blast. There were good moments. There were bad moments. Um, would you dare call it a blast, Mister Lucas? No. Oh. When George he, Lucas ain't saying nothing. He didn't even say that. Um, I don't know. I couldn't. I couldn't recommend this. If you're gonna go see it, go see it. I wouldn't recommend paying it for it at all. I would highly advise it. But it's like a five, maybe a four, but maybe a five, maybe a four point five. I think that flicks it. Like I feel like you're gonna say six. I am gonna say six. Yeah, I'd say like maybe a four point five. It was. It was a good movie. It wasn't that bad. I'd say the good moments in the 4.5 were good. Yeah, and it, it, it really was just like, yeah, it's like I give this a... A lot of scenes felt like a waste of your time. A lot of a waste of your time. Oh, the last scene is then he goes to the after, what should be an after credit scene of going to Lando in, in the Hawaiian shirt and winning. Doing the same card scene yeah. again with lamer they, aliens. They do, do it twice. With so. really lame aliens that just look like people with bras on their head. And Warwick Davis makes an appearance again. Yeah, he should like have passed. He, he he always. He should have been like, oh, I saw the last one. I'm good. Yeah, but he, <laughs> but, but he, he, he was rocking. He doesn't it, do though. anything in the movie but to show and be like, I'm Warwick Davis, and I'm always here. A lot of people just slip into British accents for no reason in this movie. Woody Harrelson and Lando both slip into a British accent out of nowhere and do like two and lines in British and then slip lines. back into the regular accents and no one says anything. They didn't go back and do another take. Nothing. Maybe that was the best take they could get. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's really weird. It's really, really weird. And everyone's who is British, their British accents are like weird. They're not like just a normal, like neutral, not draw attention Chip British accent. Oh uh, yeah, they're very like catch your attention British accents, which is really distracting because the whole movie kept being like, why are all these British people here? And then I kept having to be like, oh wait, it's Star Wars because it's not that abrasive in the other movies. It was very noted. It's like, why are there British people everywhere? Because then I guess more also like half of the people were American, half were British, and then the British accents were just all over the place. Um. But yeah, give it a four point five, maybe five on a good day. Uh, I'll give it a six. Check a it out six. on Netflix. I don't recommend. Yeah, I would recommend sneaking in, giving another movie your money. The box office still gets paid. The only people you're stealing from is Disney, who gave you that Last Jedi. And then shit, go see Infinity War. If you feel that? I'm yeah, about it. there you go. I like just pay for Infinity War. Here, Disney has the money, but I. Pay I mean, legally, we have Infinity. to say that we're joking. But, uh, yeah, but I don't know if you can see me what but, my but eye right now. It, it's twitching a lot. Um, uh, but yeah, have a friend pay for your ticket. Get it at Redbox. Pay as little money as you can for this movie because it doesn't do enough for me to make the sting go away from The Last Jedi. I, I It hasn't built any of my trust back up. All it just showed is like, oh, we, we can get a, a semi-competent Star Wars movie. Like, like I said, it was in the Star Wars universe. That's the best thing I can say about it. Uh, and it's too boring. A lot of things felt like it wasted her time. Yeah. Uh, it, 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 everyone's right. It is like the Chewbacca movie. It's not really the Han Solo movie. It's not the Lando movie. Lando's barely in it. It's not the Infamous Nest movie. She's barely in it. It's a lot of Chewie. She finally shows Chewie be cool. Chewie rips people's arms off. 
She'd be slamming people's heads down. No Star Wars special references. Other than that, what would you... Oh, oh I was going to... Okay, we're going to fix it. I would say almost everything that happened in the movie, Lando needed to... Lando should have been the role of Woody Harrelson. Lando should have been that, and they should have been together the whole movie. That would have built their character. And then if you needed to switch it to where someone else betrays him, that's fine. Maybe you still have Woody Harrelson betray him, but Lando's the Woody Harrelson character. Uh, and they should have just switched. And uh, there's so many things. Like, other people should have been playing other people's characters. It doesn't make any sense. Uh, it's so weird. It's like, if you, just, if you were him and you were him, that would be a good movie. If that was her and that was her, that would make sense. It's so weird. Uh, L3 has very thick thighs. It's yeah. really weird to watch her walk. It's almost erotic. Uh, thick robot Johnson. Lando talks some smack to her, like almost like it's really racist. It's like the stereotypical, like how a black dude would talk to. Did you see that part when he called, basically said she had like a, a frumpy fat ass? It was really weird. In like in like weird Star Wars robot talk, he was like. <laughs> Man, get your frumpy fat ass on. And I was like, dude, two black stereotypical on the nose, guys. Like, that's a little racist. Uh, and they tried to sneak it in there. Uh, I think that's all we have. Um, that's all we have time for. Yeah, we'll do. A, we'll try to do a little bit more fixing it. We did fix some of it. I forget some of the things I wanted to fix. I'm going to take notes next time when we're in the theater. Um, yeah. Because, I mean, there was a lot to be fixed oh uh, uh, F you Ryan Johnson F you Ruin Johnson F you Kathleen Kennedy uh, we know that trilogy's not happening we know you're getting fired you can figure out which one I'm talking about with it you, yeah. you can sort that I mean, out they're both pretty fired uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah that is our solo full spoiler review pew pew who shot first I'm dead school. <laughs> Who shot first? They do do that. You don't care. Yeah. It's not. <laughs> because it doesn't make sense because they don't sell the original version anymore. So it's like, unless you own it, uh, you're going to watch the version where Han didn't shoot first. So what yeah, the but, hell is but, going on? But, but this time he did. But this time he did. Uh, may the force be with you, all the real Star Wars fans that yeah. gave The Last Jedi a 24% Rotten Tomatoes score, the real score. Uh, and we are out. All right. See you next time. Fixed it. Fixed it.